me ask you, in, in terms of looking at inflation growth, Janet Yellen is going to testify on the economy tomorrow before the Congressional Joint Economic Committee. Meanwhile, you've got a lot of economists now saying this is as good as it gets. You know, you've got this synchronized global growth going on of 4%. Barclays is looking at 4% next year. Goldman Sachs is looking at 4% next year because of this synchronized growth that you're seeing all around the world. Do you agree with that? Well, I don't know about as good as it gets, but it's pretty hard to argue, certainly in the United States, about whether or not the Fed's uh, implicitly achieved or we're near whatever goals we might have. Inflation's low. There's nothing really wrong with that. Uh, and employment, unemployment rates are relatively low, and most people say we're pretty near full employment. So um, I think the fretting over low inflation is, is sort of uh, overdone. And uh, so I think things are looking pretty, pretty good. And if the U.S. Had comes through with a tax cut of some kind, um, then there's lots of reason to believe, particularly on the corporate side, a lot of reason to believe that uh, the future may be bright, brighter, even brighter for uh, corporate America and maybe for economic growth in the United States. So you think that if you do create an environment that is attractive for the corporate sector by cutting rates to 20 percent, that they will in turn invest in business, in their business, and, and, and hire workers, and, and move the needle on economic growth? I, th I think that there'll be, there will be some of that. How much is debatable, I guess, but sure. I think all, all historical evidence and, and economic theory suggests that that will be the case. So, so how, how does the, the valuation story jive into all of this? I mean, obviously, you've got talk of 4% growth in 18 from places like Goldman Sachs and, and Barclays. Then you've got a stock market that is up $5.5 trillion since the election. Bitcoin up almost to $10,000. What's your take on what's going on away from actual fundamental growth? Well, I think that's very hard to tell. I mean, neither the Fed nor the markets nor anyone else are, pretty, are very good at uh, anticipating what I think you're alluding to is sort of the risk of bubbles or financial excesses right. of some kind. Track record's not very good on that. So I, I don't think I'm any better than anyone else is. But I do think one of the things that has impressed me recently is the performance of the economy and the performance of of corporate America, particularly on profits and earnings, have looked remarkably strong despite people who have been saying that, you know, it's, they can't do it, it won't be very, it'll be a bad earnings season, what have you. I think generally it's been as good or better than most people expected. Yeah, so does that warrant then higher rates in, in 18 and in 19? Are we going into a, just a different phase in terms of monetary policy? Well, perhaps it depends on how you view it. I think uh, Janet Yellen and the Fed's traditional uh, focus on rates and on uh, employment to be the judge of inflation has not proved to be a very useful guide. I mean, the Phillips curve kind of died in the 1970s. It's kind of frustrating that the, fel the Fed still relies on Phillips curve estimates to guide its judgment about inflation. So I, th I think that the Fed needs to revisit its inflation models and rethink that. Uh, and frankly, it's hard to know exactly what ought to be the, 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 the guideposts in terms of how to conduct policy. But I do think that inflation's not greatly too low from my perspective, and that uh, the Fed needs to be careful because, in part, they keep relying on controlling the real economy as their means of controlling inflation. And I think that ultimately is, is, has been their undoing and may continue to be their undoing. And, and how do they do that? By controlling the real economy. What, what do you mean? Well, they try to control interest rates and the real interest rates in order to generate real economic growth or, un, or, or employment or what have you, and then use that as their guide to controlling inflation. And that may not prove to be the right way to think about it. In fact, economic theory and history, remember the 70s, Trying to control the unemployment rate turned out to be uh, a failure, failed policy, because unemployment ended up going up to 10 percent. I mean, uh, going up, and they kept trying to bring it down in order to, uh, uh, and inflation ended up being at 10 percent. So yeah. unemployment and inflation are not as negatively correlated with each other as some people like to think. I see. I mean, because there's a debate and a question out there as to why, knowing that you've got a 4% economy on the horizon and, you, and you've got a Fed that's poised to raise rates pretty, 
uh, consistently throughout the next year. Why then is the 10 year where it is? And people are wondering, you know, is the next move lower to 2% or higher to 2.75%? Uh, what do you think is going on in terms of, of the 10 year? I mean, wh why are these markets not in step with what the expectations are? Well, I, I think that's really hard to tell at this point. I mean, Alan Greenspan once said there's about the conundrum of long-term rates, that the Fed really doesn't control long-term rates very well. And the fact that we believe we can, or the Fed believed that it could at some point, I think is a, a bit of a, a dangerous policy guide. But uh, I think that uh, we'll have to wait and see. I, I, you're right. What the 10 years doing relative to the short rates is, um, is a bit of a, a, a bit of a, trouble, a puzzle, I guess, right now. Uh, the bad news would be if rates went up a lot, because uh, expectations of inflation rose a lot, which they haven't happened yet. So I think controlling the real interest rate may be, Milton Friedman used to tell us, Maria, <laughs> that you know, interest rates were a bad guide to monetary policy and a bad guide to controlling inflation. And I think what we're doing is seeing a lot of evidence, or so what we're seeing is a lot of evidence that you know, Milton may have been in fact right, looking at prices, that prices meaning interest rates as the sole tool of monetary policy um, may not be the best strategy here, and Tra particularly when controlling inflation. Charles, do you think if this tax plan fails, d does the economy take a step back? Uh, uh, to what do you attribute this strength in economic growth globally? I mean, I, I think the regulatory environment, what you all have done uh, at the Federal Reserve this last decade has been obviously very important in terms of the innovation the innovative ways that you've supported the economy. But here we are in a period where you are talking about 4% growth next, next year. Uh, but people are wondering if this tax plan is sort of go going to turn it either way. What's your take on that? How important is well, this? Well, I think clearly the markets and the anticipations of, of, of a tax plan of some kind, whether it's this one or another one or some, some variation on a theme, there's a lot of expectations of, of, a, of a tax plan built into the markets, into people's forecasts, their right. level of confidence, maybe into asset prices to some degree, particularly on the corporate side. So I think there is some expectation of a, of a tax reform of some kind built into the markets. I think the question about how much pullback might there be if that all falls apart is a legitimate question, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's hard to quantify that. And... Um, my guess is there would be some pullback, but would it would it end the uh, you know the recovery in some sense? Would it cause a recession, or would it would it uh, disrupt markets substantially? You know, I tend to be a little more sanguine about such things than that. Uh, I think maybe somewhat, but probably not dramatically. Yeah, because the backdrop seems pretty strong actually at this point, given the earnings picture. Exactly. Yeah, Charles, it's exactly. good to have your insights. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you, Maria. Good to be with you again. And to you. Good to see you, Charles Plosser.